How's it going? I'm here to tell you about the most important features that you need to know about scuba diving torches. That way you don't waste a load of money on a load of crap off of eBay and you get some decent kit that'll last you for a long, long time and you'll look cool. Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to another video in the series of scuba diving tutorials. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you'll not miss out on any of the videos we've posted in the past and you can see any of the other playlists that we've got. At the side of that then you'll see there's a little bell icon. If you press that, you'll get a notification every time we post a new video so you don't miss out. But if you've not got a YouTube account, what are you gonna do? You're gonna click this link up here and this will show you on a little video how you go out setting up if you don't know how to. And make sure you stick around at the end because I'll give you our top tip. So in this video then, we're gonna be talking about dive torches. <laughs> So for the kind of diving that I do, I carry three torches at all time. That way, we, if we lose any, we've always got a backup and a backup of a backup. We start off, I've got the biggest and most powerful torch that I could afford to buy. Commonly referred to as a canister torch because it comes in a canister or an umbilical torch because it's got an umbilical cord to it and then a torch head separately on what's known as a goodman's handle. You've got something to grab hold of like a rope or a shot line or a tool, for instance, to cut your mate free because he's got tangled in some fishing nets or whatever, you can still use both hands to, one to wrestle him out and the other one to cut. So, gunman handle, torch head, umbilical cord, canister. The way you turn them on and off then is an on-off switch at the top. So the burn time on them, up to about eight hours because of the size of the battery. So they're ideal for really long expedition diving or for a weekend's worth of diving, you can have that on all the time. We use them as soon as you get into the water now, because we use them to signal. A lot of the dive sites that we dive, certainly inland stuff, the visibility is always crap. You can't really see your hands, especially if you've got a black glove on. If we use light to signal that we're okay, and we're quite a bit of a distance away from each other, we can see that and everyone's happy. So what we're gonna do if that battery dies, well, we're gonna carry a backup, aren't we? As you can see, this one is quite long, so it's got three individual batteries in so this will this will probably give us I'd like to say a couple of hours maybe uh, it's really bright it's not quite as bright as the canister torch but it's it's equally as good yeah as a backup torch now we've put a little bolt snap on the top there so what that normally does is we hook that onto one of our d-rings on our harness and then it kind of mounts on the harness like that similarly then if that one goes down I've got an even smaller one this has a rechargeable battery in it's exactly the same light head as the first backup, but it's got a much smaller body on. The rationale behind having a smaller and smaller and smaller one, if your first one goes down, you've got an equipment failure. So we call the dive, we come home. So you've got one that'll get you home, but just in case you can't with that, we've got another one, but we're almost home. Even if you've got an hour in this, that'll get you back and you'll be all right. So imagine then you're diving in the sea and for whatever reason, you've had to come up to the surface. You can't see your boat and it's quite choppy and it's getting dark. You could have a strobe. So what you can do is either pull that out, mount it on your shoulder so it's not in your way all through the dive, but if and when you do need to, get it out of your dry suit pocket, mount it on your shoulder. But what I prefer is if you ascend down a shot line, the visibility might be really bad. So you could clip this onto the shot line, turn it on, and then off you pop. And then the easiest way of finding the shot line is you can see this flashing. And so if you keep your eye out for it flashing, you can head to it. And last but not least then, the kind of torches or lights and whatever we use under the water, this is a video light. It's slightly different in the respect to, see how my torch is more of a spotlight and the video light is more of a floodlight. Ah, that really hurts. Additional points we've got with this is you can flick through different colours. So you've got red, you've got violet. And the idea with them is if the red one, red light's not seen at depth, so it doesn't frighten away any fish because they can't see it. The ultraviolet ones for like corals and stuff that are fluorescent in the very nature. So you put that on, it highlights it up in photography. So you want a video light for video in, torch for normal torch use and you want backups of all of them. So my top tip then for these would be one of two things. Carry spur batteries, try and get rechargeable ones, that way you're not throwing stuff in the, in the tip all the time, and carry O-ring grease. A lot of the bodies are made of aluminium, and over time a little bit of sand or debris on there can make it quite hard to open. So if you just every now and again, just lubricate the O-rings with a bit of silicon grease and the threads, which makes them much easier to operate and less likely to fail. So let me know in the comments below then if you do anything different, if you've got any different kinds of lights or ideas that I might be able to learn from, that'd be really good. I'll show you enough fancy here and give you a thumbs up on that. And make sure you watch the rest of this series then so you can catch up on all the other videos that we've posted. A link to that is above. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. So you on Insta?